Today, we're putting our attention on the mutual intensification of neutralized complementary colors. It's a mouthful. But it's a beautiful thing, and it happens. So why, as artists, do we need to pay attention to this? Because if this is something that's happening according to natural law of the way light and color operate, we need to understand it. When we have an understanding of it, we can use it. And the better we get at manipulating it or using it, we can become the master of it. Okay? So here are, here are some examples where I think it's really important to understand this phenomena that we call the mutual intensification of neutralized complements. <clears throat> Landscape painting. I don't know how many of you have painted plein air, but I know the first few times that I went out and painted plein air, I was shocked by how little I used those green tubes of paint. Everywhere I saw green, but the greens that I saw were nothing close to the greens that I could squeeze out of my tubes of paint. I was painting mostly browns and earth colors. Even though everything appears green, how is that? right? And, and what happens, of course, in the landscape is that you're painting space, a space that's so much deeper than a still life. And, and how, do you, how do you achieve that kind of depth? Well, hopefully you understand perspective and how it applies to organic subjects, right? So that you can cr use those kinds of strategies in order to create deep space. But painters also know, because they're working with color, that they need to create atmospheric perspective. And atmospheric perspective is the neutralization of color as it recedes back into that space, okay? So, so when you're painting the landscape, how do you keep it, this very neutral palette, from just turning into mud, really, you know? And you have to remember that when you're experiencing that phenomena out there in the three-dimensional world, the palette of color is literally unlimited. But what about the palette that you have of the tubes of paint that you squeeze out to paint with? It's extremely limited. So what you have to do, in the same way you do it with value, when you're mixing your colors, you need to be a master of those color mixtures so that you can take color intervals within your palette and make them simulate the kinds of intervals that you see out there in this vast array of colors. They become stand-ins, but they have to be very precise and powerful stand-ins in order for them to replicate the feeling of that color that you see out there. So we see out there this vast array of color, and we have to translate that through the palette, meaning our, the colors that we have of paint, right, in order to create a kind of um, condensed scale of intervals that we see out there, right? So you see intervals out here in three-dimensional space, but because you have a limited palette, you have to take those intervals and condense them. Now, the other reason that we would study mutual intensification of neutralized complements is because many of us are interested in the figure. And as we look around the room, um, many of you are wearing bright colors, but we get to the flesh tones, and all of a sudden, what happens to the color? It kind of dies, doesn't it, right? So, um, so what we need to learn to do is we need to learn to look at the neutral palette of the flesh tones and see, learn to see and manipulate the subtleties in that, the warm, cool, or complementary color subtleties in that, so that we can make that flesh come alive because that's what we want, after all, unless we're painting corpses and we want them to look like corpses, right? We want this kind of vibrant palette in the flesh tone. We want it to look like it's alive and, and breathing. So anything that we can do to master the subtleties of the neutral palette is going to help us accomplish that, that task, okay? And so, so this phenomena of the mutual intensification of neutralized complements is one of those things that if we can learn to master it, we can use that in our neutral palette in order to make um, paintings that are actually quite vibrant and they feel light and lifelike. If you can get that feeling of natural light into a painting, it will come to life. Okay.